Hey guys, this is Frank. Um, it's Tuesday afternoon, so I don't know when this video is going to be exactly uploaded onto YouTube, but here's some five, I guess, pro tips about student ministry. You guys may already know um, about writing messages to students, but I feel like it's been super helpful for me, um, especially in the past uh, several years when I've been writing almost exclusively my own messages. So here's tip number one. The first thing is this, what is your bottom line? Get to the root of your message. In one sentence, what are you trying to accomplish? What are what do you want your students to walk away with? And be very concise here. Don't put a bunch of commas in that sentence and make it a run out sentence. Make it to the point where it's short enough that it can be tweeted, so within 140 characters. They're not, not so that way every message can be a tweetable statement. That's not the point of it, but students will remember this one line if it's condensed enough to uh, to fit into a tweet. So what is the bottom line of your message? Is your message that you want students to go and make disciples? Is your bottom line um, Christ speaks to us today? What is the point of your message? If you can't deduce your sermon to one sentence, one tweetable sentence, then your message is too complicated and your students won't understand everything. What is the one thing you want your students to walk away with? That's point number one. Tip number two is actually has to do with how you actually write your messages. So I know people either manuscript or outline or some, something a little bit of both. I do a little hybrid of both. I do this kind of like weird like outline and bullet points and then I kind of go off to off tangents based on my bullet points, but one thing I've always consistently do is this. Almost all my illustrations, I try to do my best that every single illustration I have is from a real life personal experience. So that way I know I can say it without having to read it, and so it'll just be like in red font illustration, um, the time you fell off the ski lift. Like that was a true story, I fell off a ski lift once, and I could use that story about it, whether it's embarrassment or being too ambitious, whatever it is, just a line falling off the ski lift, like I know exactly what I'm gonna say, so it doesn't take up too much space in your outline, and you know it's whatever you say is gonna be organic, and students love it when you're actually organic with your message. Um, but with the things that are important, like the important points you want to make sure you come across, manuscript it. Don't leave it up to chance. Just because you have to look down and read it doesn't mean you're losing your kids. The fact that you're clear and you're saying exactly what you want to say is more important than trying to come off as cool, like you know those preachers who don't have any notes ever. Like. Say what you need to say and manuscript what you absolutely have to say. Your kids will appreciate it later. In fact, if it's very important, like it's a point your kid, you want your kids to get, Put it on the screen and it will draw their attention off of you and they'll read it with you while you're on the screen. So you have this one point about, you know, the love of Christ and you want to make sure like it's an impactful quote or line or whatever and you have to literally look down and read the whole time, that's fine. Put the quote on the screen, their attention will be off of you and onto the screen and you can read the whole thing without feeling bad or that you're not cool or whatever. It, don't worry about being cool. That's not the point of preaching. The point of preaching is exalting Christ. So. Do it. Manuscript the very important points. You don't want to leave that to chance. Your illustrations will always come out right because it's your real experience. You've shared it enough times that you know what to say. So outline the illustrations and manuscript the very important points you want your students to get. Number three, this is just a, a, a tip that I've actually had some people kind of combat me on, but I don't see what the big deal is. Um, if you're quoting a reference in scripture, write out the whole passage in your notes. Your notes will be maybe longer if you're using physical pages. It might be more pages. If it's like um, on your iPad, you might have to swipe more, but it's worth it to have your actual sermon references, the full verse within your notes. Simply because if you're going through your scripture a ton or um, the, the, your Bible flipping pages, you're adding minutes to your time that you're already losing your attention. But 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 if you're actually, it's in your notes, you're still reading from the Word of God, you're just taking the Word of God from the Bible into your tablet or to your passage. So so put the actual passage into your notes. I, this might be something that everyone does, but I know a lot of people who feel like they have to, whenever they read the passage, they have to go to their Bible. And that's admirable, and I'm not insulting there or dissing that, but if you want to... Uh, flow your message quicker, you want to get there um, to save time, to, to be able to have everything together and not mess up because sometimes you might forget where Amos is, I don't know. Put it in your notes. It's gonna be worth it. Um, so when all else fails, if you're if you're right, if you're like trying to write your message, and you know, you don't, where, you don't, where do I begin? Me, we, God, you, we. Andy Stanley wrote in a book once called Communication for Change. It's like one of the most popular ways of writing a message, and, and it just goes this. It goes like this. Me is where you talk about yourself, how you il illustrate the way you go into a message. Um, use a personal example. So that's your me. We is connecting your personal example to what you're gonna talk about by using 
uh, by, by, by bringing everyone into the conversation. So if you want to talk about a time where you were embarrassed on your first day of school, you share that story. And then when you get to the we part, you talk about how we've all been in a place where we've been embarrassed um, at some point in our life. And then if you talk about a message about whether being bold or, or whether it's you know dealing with um, bullies or whatever whatever your scripture is, whatever you're going to the, the passage you're going into, that's where me we God the God part goes in. And so this is where most of your exegetical work is going to be in. This is where you're going to break down the passage, and and then after you break down the passage and talk su sufficiently of what the scripture has to say, then you get to the you part where you bring back the passage from God, this is what the Bible says, to the application. How does this passage then, after you've broken it down, apply to the individual? And then the end, me, we, God, you, we, you end with, where do we go from here? How do we take this truth and go out to the world and talk about it? So I always say this, always say this whenever, whenever I, when I write my sermons. When all else fails, me, we, God, you, we. It's not how I always form formulate my messages. It's not always the pattern. But if I'm stuck and I'm like, where do I begin? How do I, I know what passage I'm talking about. I know the point, the bottom line. But how do I get this from beginning to end? Me, we, God, you, we is a great standard to start off, to get your bones in there, and then you can tweak stuff later. It's the best way for me to kind of get my thoughts on paper to finally finish my message. Me, we, God, you, we. Um, Communication for a Change by Andy Stanley, is a, it's a good book. It's not the best book I'm preaching, but I think it's a great book for preaching to students. So check that out. And the last thing is this, is uh, get three good commentaries. Three good commentaries. The reason why I say three is you want more than just one voice speaking into the passage, um, and you also want kind of a variety passages. So for example, um, it's hard for me to say like just get this one commentary set because I like certain commentaries over the other. If I'm in the book of Acts, I want Daryl Bach. If I want Romans, I'll probably get Thomas Schreiner. Like there's different scholars that you want for different books. But like my, my two go-to books is uh, the ESV Study Bible and um, and the Gospel Transformation Bible. So those two Bibles, um, are their study notes are really, really good and are really helpful for students. The ESV Study Bible is great because it does a pretty good exegetical work on the passage, um, but it's a study Bible, so it's not going to be too exhaustive, but it's good, especially for students. And then the Gospel Transformation Bible is great because it's more applicational. It takes the passage um, from its context and applies it to how the how it shapes us and moves us in the gospel. And so I love those two books. And then my third commentary, I have Logos Bible software, so I have like a ton of commentary, but I had to break down three commentaries. I might do like a MacArthur commentary because he does a pretty good job like kind of getting the original language into the scope of things and, and things like that. But you have to kind of know kind of your kind of style and kind of your also theological background because all I just mentioned are pretty reformed and if you're not in a reformed church you might get kicked out for preaching what I'm preaching but what I'm saying is this is kind of know who you like who do you respect and, and not just who you respect but who is the, the scholar on that subject like if I'm going to study the book of Acts I'm going to go to Daryl Bach if I'm going to study Romans I really like Schreiner I like I mean there's other guys that are really good on different books of the Bible and there's multiple scholars on the, in different books so do your research. I love Logos Bible Software because I got a thousand commentaries all focused on one and I just type in what the Greek word is for this and it tells me everything I need to know and it's really good stuff. But I know not everyone has that kind of money to fork over for Logos. So getting three good study Bibles, good commentaries for your preaching stuff, especially for students, is really good. ESV Study Bible and Gospel Transformation Bible, you can get away with a lot of sermons with just those two books. The point of all this is to point our kids closer to Jesus. And it, the, the skill of writing a message is something that I think is so vital for every youth pastor to gauge and get and, and grab onto because when you can contextualize that passage that God has put on your heart to those students, there's, there's nothing better. There's no curriculum you can buy that will take the place of you writing your own message and transforming it into the lives of these students. So. Hopefully I'll make some more videos like this to kind of talk about some insights of how I write messages or insights on student ministry. But until then, hopefully I'll see you Thursday when I talk about this is what I did last night. Until then, I'll see you guys later. God bless.